Good evening, everyone. This is CJ Peaceful again. Uh, this video is a uh, response to a um, previous video concerning what I'm calling now the uh, my plate gap theory. Um, it is a nicely evolving theory, I believe. Um, I've spoken with several individuals about this theory. And I've had to take into account uh, several more um, uh, specific um, actions that are taking place during brute force electrolysis, specifically speaking, during a, uh, a using a, a series cell. Um, I've had a few people ask me if I could uh, make a video uh, briefly explaining maybe some of my notes in this, this equation that I've got before me. Um, you'll notice in the last one, um, I believe I had uh, MA, yes there it is, MA, which at the time, I stated that uh, MA represents the area of the magnetic field created between two plate surfaces. Um, you know, the more I thought about this, and I want to thank Luther P40 for, for really sparking an interest in this, um, I discovered that nowhere um, there is mention of an electromagnetic field uh, being created during the electrolysis process that uh, supposedly splits the water molecules into their respective molecules, uh, gaseous molecules, or excuse me, gaseous atoms. Um, and I know a lot of people believe that. Um, I don't know where that came from. Um, I know at the time when I was developing this theory, or rather this equation, it's part of my theory, um, I knew there is something missing, there's something that I needed to represent in this equation that would give the whole equation a completeness, or at least a, a, a as close as a completeness, completeness excuse me, as possible. Um, truthfully, at the time, I was sort of wavering back and forth between the idea of a magnetic field or just the surface area, if you will, of one of the plates, whether it's the electrode or it's what some people are calling a neutral or blank plate. Um, I want to read something to you. Um, and this goes back to Faraday's laws of electrolysis, which there are two of. Um, this first one says, uh, and I quote, The mass of a substance altered at an electrode during electrolysis is directly proportional to the quality of an electricity transferred at that electrode. Quantity of electricity refers to electrical charge, typically measured in coulombs, and not to electrical current. We'll talk about this later, about the current. Uh, in the first law, there is no mention of a magnetic field. Uh, number two says, for a given quantity of electricity, electric charge we're talking, the mass of an elemental material altered at an electrode is directly proportional to the element's equivalent weight. The equivalent weight of a substance in its molar mass divided by an integer that depends on the reaction undergone by the material. Basically, folks, that means, at least to me, and I, I could be wrong, but it's the chemical reaction that's created during the electrolysis that causes the formation of gas, whether it's hydrogen or oxygen. Um, I saw an interesting article the other day in Scientific American, I believe it was, um, they supposedly found a cheaper way of separating um, the two gases during electrolysis. And uh, in that article, and the short video presented, uh, again, it was never mentioned of a magnetic field which caused the water molecules to separate um, So, I've had to uh, rethink this equation, and this is what I've come up with. Let me try to zoom in here and give you a little bit more information. I know it's hard to read, and I apologize. So, 
So this is no longer part of the equation. And instead, we're just calling this the surface area, or rather the half of the total surface area of a single plate. Again, I just want to stress this is a theory that I am working on. Um, and this equation is, of course, evolving. Um, and I believe, uh, in the end, uh, we, meaning myself and others, uh, will have constructed a very nice and uh, very sound theory regarding uh, series cell plate design and efficiency. Um, again, this is this is just sort of a, uh, a baseline, if you will. A way to sort of get one started in uh, designing a, a series cell. Uh, now some of you may be asking, new to this, what, well, what is a series cell? Well, basically, I, I've got one here in my hand. Um, I have an anode and cathode, or positive and negative, and a couple plates sandwiched in between. Uh, those plates are not connected to the positive or negative plates. Uh, those are neutral plates, and some people are starting to call them blank plates, which brings up something else I'm sure I want to be talking about soon. Um, but basically, this is a series cell. Um, and using this equation, um, I uh, was able to construct the cell and did a few tests on it. And I was able to generate a nice uniform gas production between uh, these plates. Um, and that's really the whole goal uh, of this equation. Um, is to help maybe a little better uh, understanding of what's going on with the result of a nice uniform gas production uh, between each plate. Now, of course, when you get in something like this, uh, when you got sort of a, <laughs> uh, a VW type uh, cell design, it gets a little bit more complicated as far as proper spacing and whatnot. But um, I hope this helps. And I want to thank those who've contributed to the thought and this theory. Uh, this theory is, like I said, evolving nicely, I believe. Um, I hope pretty soon uh, to show you more equations that make up the total theory. Um, but we'll see. Only time will tell, I guess. Uh, any questions? Please feel free to make comments. Like I said, I'll answer those comments as best as I can. And if I feel like uh, further explanation of videos required, I will create one for you and post it. Thanks a lot, folks.